Hi, <clears throat> and welcome to a little conversation between me and my friend Johan. And uh, as it happens uh, in life, uh, we have similar experiences, but also uh, complete uh, opposites to some extent uh, when it comes to the Swedish uh, system for uh, psychiatry and uh, their implementation of medication. My experience is that I was completely denied all of it because they didn't want me to get hooked on something because everyone can figure out that if you feel like shit and you know that it's going to be something with you for the rest of your life and it's terrible if I have to eat a pill every day to help that <laughs> for the rest of my life to feel better and how that makes it irrelevant if it's ad addictive or not <laughs> like, no you can't be addicted to something you take every day for the rest of your life completely <laughs> ridiculous reasoning but that's what every doctor said to me where I'm from and where I am so I fortunately been able to explore nature around this beautiful country of ours and that has been my my medication uh, wandering and uh, self-reflection and then of course I had my uh, personal uh, investigation uh, in uh, neuropsychiatry where I got my diagnosis uh, and after that I've just been learning about myself with that additional filter or yeah that's an appropriate term I think because it kind of it's not what defines me but it's definitely a big part of me so let's turn the focus a bit more on you on here and uh, when uh, did you start interacting with the psychiatry um, I got in touch with them when I was 14 I think okay and um, quite early on they put me on various medications uh, at first benzodiazepines and um, I guess I was lucky that I was caught up by the psychiatric healthcare early but I think um, I was unlucky in some ways because yeah, their approach I got was too much medication yeah. and uh, it's uh, of course my own fault but um, with the medications in some of them the, it, uh, it came with an addiction yeah. and misuse uh, to be honest and um, yeah so medication isn't always good either yeah but, uh, of course everyone that's been through that system a bit knows that uh, doctors tend to experiment a bit on us and give us different medications and different amounts of them and dif yeah different combinations that interact in different ways yeah so do you remember because that's I think a po important part of the journey <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. because you had very different medications in the beginning compared to the last like five or ten years yeah um, my issues were quite different back then so of course there's different medications yeah uh, medicines uh, but um, all in all it's pretty much the same it numbs you down yeah and uh, but you did you didn't start on lyrica for example uh, yeah that's a, a very strange medicine yeah um, because in the beginning it was more like uh, oxyscan which is like light volume pretty much yeah and or yeah of course it doesn't become light when you take over 10 of them but that's uh, another <laughs> thing. yeah and then they prescribe uh, others later on and uh, yeah I quit pencils for quite a long time mm. but then I started again and um, it, 
they put me on Summer or Xanax for a very, very long time. Yeah. And yeah. It's it helps, but uh, it's not it's not an answer. Yeah. Or a solution. Yeah, and uh, it's taken you quite many years to get off the medications as well. Yeah. yeah. But I'm yeah, it's possible, but <laughs> it takes some time. Yeah. Is there anything else that has helped for you? Like your approach to living with or without medication? Um, I think uh, med- uh, medicine is uh, it's very good that we, ha- we have uh, uh, benzos for disease. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's better to manage something without it, of course. And uh, there's so much other things that's more useful. Yeah. Um, finding meaning in what you do and stuff like that. And that usually helps. Yeah. As you mentioned, nature, yeah, some peace of mind, mm. yeah. If that was an answer, yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think so. And of course, if those who watch this have uh, feel that something we're touching on here is something we could develop further, uh, we are of course open for suggestions. Uh, right now we're just winging it because <laughs> that would be weird to bring a questionnaire to the forest or, well not when you're for this purpose of course yeah I think this became a lot shorter than I had envisioned it but Yeah, it's probably be sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting, but um, yeah. I'm thinking, um, what did, what for you? What was the um, how should I put it? Um, main uh, struggle you had, or you think uh, you had due to not having medicine, or your uh-huh. uh, yeah. Well, just that I'm often. Uh, expected to cope with situations that are way beyond what I'm actually comfortable with. Okay, yeah. Like one instance is a restaurant I used to work at. Uh, One of my bosses didn't like me. So uh, he would put me in charge of very stressful things like being a, a greeter and informant and host of a buffet for 1,500 people (laughs) where I'm the sole responsible responsible person to tell everyone what's on the menu and what everything is in the different meals that we're serving and things like that and what people with allergies can eat instead things like that how old were you Uh, at that time? That was like uh, five or six years ago, so that was just when I was 30. Uh, For me, I think um, it was way harder to, um, well, uh, for one, accept uh, certain things when you were younger. And uh, I think uh, it was harder to deal with Mm. some issues. Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, That's when I was uh, a lot more uh, introverted and shy than I am now. Uh, Yeah, because it's uh, a huge difference now. Yeah. And uh, as we know, uh, the first years that we knew each other, I was a lot more, uh, yeah, like distant in many ways and also less open because I had been hurt at least a few times. Uh, enough times that I didn't trust anyone and was very selective about anything that I would say or reveal about my thoughts or feelings about different things yeah yeah and I usually turned I, I just focused all of that energy into my music and back then I only had hypothermia and uh, life lovers so and not 10 other projects and bands so my 
my energy was very focused on those two things and that's why those years were so intense as well um, yeah yeah um. Yeah. Um, how would you st how would you say that um, you deal with being a greeter today? Well, that's no problem either, since yeah. uh, uh, a reason why I could handle all that pressure and stress very well is that my threshold is insane. Uh, but. Uh, the way that I have that threshold so high is because I live the majority of my time in solitude and away from people and in, you know in the countryside in, in the forest so because of that I build my tolerance because all the time that I'm away from people I can focus on uh, developing my uh, like patience so uh, when people are asking me the same question for the 50th time in a row about something that shouldn't even need to be asked about <laughs> and like having co-workers that are supposed to know the menu <laughs> that's pretty basic if you work at a restaurant to know what you're actually serving <laughs> and to have them ask me time and time again um, but that's not really yeah, uh, aware. what I was going to say is the, the, the way that I also learned to cope with that is uh, a few years before that, like in my earlier 20s, I was traveling a lot by bus and train. A lot of buses actually, because back then, now trains are pretty cheap in Sweden. Yeah. But like 10, 15 years ago, the buses used to be a lot cheaper. For some weird reason they're more expensive now which is very stupid because they take twice the amount of time so you're you're wasting money and time <laughs> yeah so uh, i've barely been taking buses the past five years compared to like 15 years ago i was on a lot of buses and i used to travel a lot between gothenburg and brussels in belgium and that's like 20 hours on, on a bus where you're stuck around other people so that also has that helped me to build a tolerance, <laughs> yeah. But you can get pretty far with like a good book and a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah, 20 hours. And if you're reading the sad on the bus, people won't approach you Did you most read of it the out time. loud? Unfortunately not. <laughs> you needed more wine. Yeah, but it's, that's one of the interesting things when you're going through Germany because all the gas stations and rest stops have beer and wine, so yeah, that's you get to stock up. Yeah. And of course, as a almost unwritten rule on buses, the bathroom never works, so they have to stop every like two or three hours. That's one of the reasons why it takes a long time. Okay. <laughs> because you can imagine 40 or 50 people have to go in the bathroom. Yeah, you need at least so one the toilet. rest stops also <laughs> takes like 30. 40 minutes each time. Yeah. But, uh, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. And uh, of course, having all that time, uh, yeah. uh, distancing yourself from others most of the time, or being forced to talk with an old lady about something for 10 hours can be, yeah, that builds uh, patience. So, so in some ways, uh, Riding a bus helped you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, then I had a few years when I was hitchhiking a lot. Yeah. And that was pretty weird at many times too. <laughs> yeah, in some Because you can't control uh, anything then. In some ways, you're forced to develop some skills. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, it gets harder. <laughs> yeah. Harder than it has to be. Uh, would you say it took you um, time to accept that you had to develop, or not necessarily develop without it being something you're you were supposed to develop but may, maybe focusing more on, on developing social skills than you think you should have uh, I'm not sure because uh, I've always been uh, pretty good at uh, communicating my ideas and thoughts yeah. like my vocabulary is 
pretty well evolved considering that I didn't go further than the ninth grade in school but I uh, I've always taken it upon myself to read books and expand uh, my language both in Swedish and English yeah because the more you know that gives you access to uh, other books that like if you don't practice and uh, study you uh, there is you know when it comes to philosophy and psychology and theology there is a lot of complicated terms in those books yeah and it's like university level english and that's something that i've thought to myself just out of interest in those subjects because you know when you're re- uh, coming upon words that you don't know uh, you need different systems to uh, teach yourself what those things mean and back then Google wasn't a thing so I would simply read different parts and learning the definitions uh, by different words and knowing what's synom- synonymous to those words so by knowing something similar, I can figure out by myself what different things mean and how they're supposed to be used and so on. And having all that time by myself, that's another thing that played into my ability to tolerate social situations with other people and strangers. Because that's a, it's very important when you work in a kitchen but also when you're on the road as a musician to be able to clearly communicate with different people yeah I think it's important to uh, or uh, yeah expand the vocabulary and so on because the more words you have uh, the more it's tools yeah and the further you can um, uh, develop your thoughts yeah and if you develop your thoughts you develop it or you're able to develop a framework yeah exactly and um, for me reading helped a lot yeah. not instantly but um, over time yeah um, very much uh, for that reason I think uh, or thanks to that mechanism or whatever to call it and um, how would you say uh, have you you read a lot or I Some. used to, uh, I barely anymore because I spend more time uh, just uh, going through all the different concepts and obsessions that I have at different moments. <laughs> because, uh, like for example, the past year I've been working on a conceptual album where the lyrics are a bit like mirrors of each other. Uh, they're similar but different. So I'm searching myself for different... Uh, metaphors and uh, synonyms to make a balanced version that I've from the two lyrics that I've written I need the third one and I'm stuck in the middle of it because I haven't found the right words uh, yeah writing <laughs> helps to develop that uh, uh, your capacity of developing thoughts as well yeah. I think yeah definitely yeah, you write a lot more than me, but yeah, that's maybe been one of your strategies to I think so. develop that. Or, and also to cope with uh, things. Yeah, because uh, how has your experience been? Processing. Uh, from, because I know you had several jobs for yeah several years at each place that are working by talking with other people on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's... Uh, not really a kind of job that I think people would expect from you as an artist like the image people maybe have (laughs) of you as a uh, like a past life lover member and stuff like that to be at a call center (laughs) yeah uh, there's some prices no I don't know yeah well how was those experiences for you because it it sounds like a Quite horrible. Nightmare. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, it really depends on the place you work and yeah. your co-workers. Um, if the, it's a 
good and pleasant environment, it's yeah, that's perfect. True. It yeah. then it works. Uh, but if it's stressful and so on, then you're more vulner uh, vulnerable to stress from your work assignments. Mm. Uh, so it's not an ideal job for me, but yeah. uh, it works for now. Yeah. Or now it's. Yeah, but it's, it's better than uh, what you had up in Stockholm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because that, that job seemed weird. Except the warehouse uh, yeah. where I worked for a while. It, it was great. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah. Sounds good. And you're going back to restaurants soon? Yeah. So that's going to be nice. It's my third year. Nice. Yeah, and it's, it has some amazing forests and nature around it. So I look forward to sharing that. Yeah, I'll drop by. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and of course, those of you watching, if you're spending time in Sweden uh, and want a good meal or a nice beer with a nice view, you should stop by. And I think <coughs> yeah, we've covered pretty much for this time. And if, as always, if people have questions, we're I was open to answer yeah. them further. I think we did quite well with our script. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Take care.